Got a Photoshop question? Brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. It's Ask Dave. This week's question comes from Lindsay Wheeler, who says, I see there you can get various templates out there, Photoshop layouts. How do you use them? Good question. And that's one of the great things is there are lots of options out there for layouts. Here's one that I happen to be using. This is from On One Software. They've made a, a bunch of these uh, template pages available. And as you look over at the layers panel, you'll see it's just a series of layers. But each of these you could consider kind of placeholders in a sense. And you want to replace these with your own images. But there's actually a simpler way because a lot of people end up trying to bring an image in and kind of replace it. I just use these as a way to put the images in very simply. And I'm going to use Mini Bridge just because it's easy. So here I just have a bunch of images I've already chosen. And all I do, and I'm just going to repeat this operation multiple times. I kind of target what do I want to do first. I want to replace this gray with a photograph I have of a wedding dress. I'm going to make sure I'm, that's the layer I'm on. From Mini Bridge, click and drag onto the image. If necessary, I can resize a little bit up or down, depending, assuming you have the resolution to do that, of course. I can also decide on you know the positioning and things like that, but I think I'm gonna go something like this and hit enter. Now as an added bonus, these will all be smart objects, which means you'll be able to do filters and also edit the contents. Then I just continue that operation. I want to go, all right, now I want the next, the big image over here, which is this one. I drag this over. And again, I can, I know these images are big enough. I can afford to resize it a little bit because I want to focus the attention a little bit more like that. I want to make sure that the image doesn't go too far. In this case, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but look what happens in this case. So I want to add an image to this third box. I'm going to take this one here, drag it in. Position over the one I want and I'm gonna scale it down. But I don't wanna scale it down too much. I wanna just sort of focus like that. Well, if I now hit enter, of course, it doesn't look very good because I'm not taking advantage of the shape. But look over here in the layers panel. I made sure once again I'd clicked first on this kind of placeholder. Now it's positioned right on top of it. If I hold down the option or alt key and click once, I create this thing called a clipping mask and now the photograph is clipped inside that. So let me just do the last two so you get the idea. Drag it over. Let's close this up. I have sort of a progression of them coming down the stairs so I want to accentuate that by changing the scaling just a little bit and then again option or alt click between the two layers and then go to the last one. Drag that in. Scale it down. Something like that, maybe. In this case, I might even rotate it just a little bit. There we go. And then clip them together. So that we've taken advantage of this pre existing layout template, but I can still continue to tweak things. For example, I decide that it's a little hard to read the text because of the light color of the wedding dress so I could try lowering the opacity of the dress so that gray layer below comes into play. Or I decide I want to soften up this photograph. It's already a smart object so I could apply a smart filter like Gaussian Blur. Soften it up a little bit and then come in here and lower the opacity to create that kind of soft effect, but I don't want it on their faces, so I would make sure that I kind of took that away from there. So then we'd have an effect like that. Looks pretty good. Now, the only other thing I would say is once you've done this, save as a different name. So you're preserving the template as is. Um, this is a, just a very simple way when you have a multi-layer template where someone has gone to the trouble of separating everything, then I would take advantage of that by dropping photographs right above and using clipping masks to finalize the effect.
Ask your short Photoshop question using the contact form here at Kelby TV or through Twitter at Dave Cross. Thanks for watching Ask Dave, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals and the Dave Cross Workshops. We'll see you next time.